What's up? In this video, I'm going to uh, recommend you three different uh, highly visual machine learning projects, which are going to help you better understand machine learning and also improve your coding skills. So many of you go through Coursera courses and you learn a bunch of machine learning theory, uh, but not so many of you go and actually develop a machine learning project. And that will a help you learn machine learning much better because you'll notice certain things you thought in you and you'll realize you actually didn't know them. And secondly, it will be a really awesome thing to have on your CV, much better than having a bunch of random skills and no code to back it up. That being said, let me recommend you the first project, and it's going to be Amnest Digit Classification. Now, I already hear you say, like, dude, don't give me this super mainstream toy project. It's the hello world of computer vision, basically. But I'm going to give you a couple of tips to make this super good beginner friendly machine learning project. So the reason I'm recommending this project as the first project is that you'll be focusing on the model on the neural networks and not on the data. And much of the machine learning uh, day to day job is about uh, data engineering, analyzing your data and visualizing your data. But in this project, you're going to focus on the machine learning model mostly and just tracking uh, its performance via accuracy metrics. So uh, the first thing I want you to do is just take some off-the-shelf model like uh, VGG16, VGG19, mobile nets, uh, explore uh, those off-the-shelf models which are already pre-trained for you and just develop the end-to-end -end pipeline. So load the data, uh, use off-the-shelf model and track the accuracy metric. After you've done that, go ahead and try and develop your own uh, neural network from scratch for start using uh, like pure feed forward neural network. And as a third step, after you've uh, developed the feed forward neural network and you track the accuracy, you're gonna do it with convolutional neural network, CNN, and you're gonna again track the accuracy. And then you'll have, uh, you can compare the three approaches you took. So the off the shelf model, the feed forward neural network and the uh, CNNs. One more thing you're going to do for all of the three approaches here is plot the confusion matrix and the confusion matrix basically tells you where your model is having a really hard time uh, predicting the true label the true digit so say you have like uh, an image of uh, digit one and you figure out that your model is often making mistake confusing it with number seven and that would make sense right because ones and sevens people tend to write those alike. There's a lot of interesting insight you can get uh, just plotting confusion matrix and seeing where your model is having a uh, hard time. And by doing that, you can maybe even uh, augment your data set and uh, maybe put some more like sevens and ones in the data set so that your model will learn how to uh, discriminate between those two uh, better. So once you're done with uh, developing those three uh, approaches, uh, go ahead and uh, maybe uh, create your own data points that look like MNIST digits. So just go uh, like use paint or, or some program and manually uh, draw a couple of digits and, and just check out how your model is uh, generalizing to those images, which uh, the model didn't see during the training uh, procedure. And also you can use maybe uh, GANs. I'll link my repo in the description, which will help you generate new MNIST digits and you can see whether your model is uh, can correctly predict the digit that's in that image. Finally, you can always take your project a step further by developing, say, a web application and uh, deploying your model there and just letting others maybe uh, use it as a service. Uh, but that's less of a machine learning, arguably, more of a like software engineering and also machine learning uh, MLOps, uh, popularly known as. Anyways, that's just an option you also have on your disposal. So the second project I recommend you go ahead and try out is uh, develop your small image search engine. And that might sound frightening, but it's actually pretty simple. The goal will be to, uh, given your data set of say thousand images, uh, to take a single image and find say five or 10 images, uh, which are the most similar to your input image. So the the, how the project will approximately look like is you're going to uh, find some data set like ImageNet or MS Coco or some of those uh, popular computer vision uh, data sets. You're going to extract thousand images out of those 
and that's a small pre-processing step maybe and then the smart part of the project is actually finding the code for that input image and for all of the other images in your data set and just finding five or say ten uh, images which are the, the most similar to your input image. How you'll find the code is just input the image into VGG and from some deep layer you'll take uh, feature maps, flatten them and that's your code. And then how you calculate the distance there's just simple Euclidean uh, distance between those uh, two codes. So in these uh, two first projects you're going to learn how to uh, just consume uh, models that are already there in the deep learning framework uh, like off-the-shelf models you're going to learn how to develop some basic uh, neural networks from scratch and you'll also learn how to tweak the existing models like for the image search engine you'll probably have to prune a couple of the last layer like fully connected layer from VGG or whatever and just flatten out change the view of the of those feature maps in order to get the, the the image code in this third project you're going to leverage existing uh, models that are not a part of the deep learning framework you're going to develop uh, an object detection pipeline using this popular object uh, detection model called YOLO and there are three flavors of this model version 1 version 2 and version 3 I encourage you to go ahead and explore read some blogs uh, maybe even research papers depending on your skill uh, how those work you'll just go ahead and use the model uh, out of the box so you won't be training it for yourself because it takes a lot of time to train your YOLO you're just going to use it as it is and develop some box filtering depending on which classes you want to use some models are trained on MS Coco, some are trained on Pascal VOC so they'll be having a uh, different number of uh, classes the Coco version will have 80 classes I think and then uh, Pascal VOC will have 20 classes so pick the, ver the version you want do the filtering and just uh, figure out which images it expects and voila you, you build yourself an object detection pipeline the nice thing about YOLO is that it's super fast it can run real time so that means uh, 30 FPS or, or even higher depending on the flavor of the model you took a simple way to just kind of um, level up this project would be to uh, figure out a way to deploy this to some mobile application where you could be using your your mobile camera to be uh, to detect some certain objects real time. So that's it. These three projects will give you a hands-on experience with machine learning and you're going to learn a lot. Tweaking models, playing with the data, visualizing, uh, coding it yourself and publishing it to GitHub. Also feel free to check out my GitHub. Uh, I've been developing lo lots of uh, deep learning uh, projects recently and I'll be including uh, those in the next video uh, on advanced projects which will help you get even better at deep learning. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, also make sure to click that uh, bell icon so that you get notified when I upload a new video. And finally, if you have any other interesting beginner friendly projects which you think others may find useful, uh, go ahead and write them down in the comment section. I'd love to know about them. Feel free to ask any questions. I'll, I'll make sure to answer all of them. Until next time, keep learning.